Well, good morning, everyone. And David, thank you very much for those prayers, lovely prayers for our church, for our volunteers and our staff. And we really do appreciate for us for you leading us in those. Thank you. And good morning, everyone online. It's wonderful we can be united together as a church family, whether sitting in the auditorium or uh, with you in, in your sitting rooms or your bubbles, wherever you are. It's lovely that we are united together in this time of thanksgiving. Well, I've been asked to share a short message on the theme of thanksgiving. And when Leighton contacted me a little while ago about it, he emphasized that it was to be a short message. I was actually very thankful, as indeed I'm sure is everyone else. And there are many things to be thankful for, aren't there? Um, And, uh, you know, we've just been thanking our staff and our volunteers. And can I just say on behalf of the elders how much we appreciate and value the staff and the volunteers of this church. We see your dedication, we see your efforts, and we praise and thank God for each one of you for serving us. Well, as I reflected on being thankful, we've been being thankful in a corporate sense, but it's also about being thankful on a pers- at a personal level. And as I reflected on it over the last little while, I thought, what have I been particularly thankful for? And there have been many, many things. But what I thought I'd just focus on this morning is the recent holiday that we've enjoyed as a family. We got away down to the Coromandel on the Thames coast specifically. Many of you may know that part of the country. Beautiful coastal scenery with the bush and the sea meeting together. And this is a shot just uh, deep in the Coromandel bush, uh, looking towards what, no- what is known as Table Mountain. It's a ridge looking eastwards. And uh, I actually grew up in the shadow of Table Mountain in Cape Town in South Africa. And I think it's absolutely wonderful. We have a Table Mountain here, right here in New Zealand, in the Coromandel. Uh, a slightly different size and scale, but wonderful nevertheless to have Table Mountain uh, in the Coromandel. This shot I took, I was deep in the bush. I had doing a, been doing a bit of training recently. And uh, I was running along State Highway 25. I turned right at Wyomu, headed into the bush. And, you know, I didn't see anybody for five hours while I was up um, in those trails. Absolutely wonderful part of the country. And then the sea. How we as a family love the sea. We have so much fun and enjoy it so much. I hasten to add, this is not me in the laser. This is our son, Reuben, hiking out in a steady 10 to 12 northeasterly, heading towards Thornton's Bay. And it that wind condition creates a beautiful uh, sailing conditions on the, on the Firth of Thames. Now, if that was me in the image, it would be more fairly depicted as the laser inverted with me struggling on an upturned hull, desperately trying to right it under the instruction of Reuben. But uh, I prefer arms uh, for propulsion, so kayaking and swimming are, are more to my liking. But then I was able to spend two days down in the South Island And I'm sure many of you will know the spectacular scenery that we have. So much to be thankful for. Different to the North Island, isn't it? This is a shot of the Waimakariri River as it winds its way eastwards. And I learned that Makariri means cold. And boy, did I know that. Because we had to cross it 10 to 15 times over this trip that we did. And it's certainly very cold. We were following a guide as we did a training run over Goat Pass. And was I ever thankful to have a guide? Because they called it a run, but to be honest, it was more boulder hopping and rock hopping and bush scrambling. And there was no trail to follow, certainly for the first half. If we did not have, had we not had a guide, I think I'd still be blundering around in the, in the bush somewhere. <clears throat> but I wonder what it was for you. So many things to be thankful for. I've shared a bit about holidays. But what was it for you? What has it been for you? Was it the ending of that lockdown that never seemed to end? Was it reconnecting with family and friends? Perhaps it was holidays like us. Maybe you're a student at school or uni and you had exam success at the end of the year. Maybe you've recently changed roles or got a new job. Whatever it is, something else, I don't know, but you'll know whatever it is that you're thankful for. And so I wanted to connect us to a text this morning And this is from the book of Thessalonians, book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5. And this is Paul writing to a church that's under pressure, a church that is facing great difficulties. And he writes this. He says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you 
in Christ Jesus. Now, as I extract a single verse out of Scripture, I hear the words of that wonderful preacher, teacher, evangelist, minister, John Stott, gently saying, William, remember, a text without a context is just a pretext. But I think I'm on safe ground here because being thankful is a theme that runs right through the Bible, from the Old Testament right through to the New. And we see it in Paul's writing right here. We see it in Ephesians. We see it in Philippians. It's a theme that we can be confident of being thankful. And I think there's a couple of things to notice here. How Paul says to give thanks in all circumstances. In all circumstances. And the other interesting thing is he doesn't say to give thanks for all circumstances, but he says to give thanks in all circumstances. It's a subtle but important distinction. Now, I don't know if you're like me. It's easy to give thanks when we feel like giving thanks, but it's much harder when we actually don't feel like giving thanks, when our circumstances are not conducive to giving thanks. Then it becomes harder, doesn't it? If you think of that list I ran through earlier, you know, perhaps our summer holiday didn't go quite the way we'd planned. Perhaps reconnecting with family and friends wasn't quite what we'd hoped for. Maybe that new job didn't come through. Maybe those exam, exams that were written weren't quite, the results weren't quite what you expected. I don't know what it is for you, but the reality is we don't live a sugar-coated life as followers of Christ, do we? We are, have our feet firmly on the ground. We are often laboring in the valleys, straining in the trenches as we seek to live out our faith. But that leads me on to another verse, again, from the writings of Paul, and many of you will know this, I'm sure. Paul says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the thing that strikes me about this verse is that often when we don't feel like giving thanks, it's perhaps because there's an underlying anxiety or an anxiousness or an issue, something that's troubling us, something that doesn't feel quite right. And Paul gets it. And this is what I find so encouraging. He gets it. He recognizes this. And I think he doesn't say, don't be anxious in a big authoritarian voice. No, Paul is an encourager. He's saying, look, don't be anxious. And here's the, here's the answer to your, your anxiousness. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. It's a great encouragement. <clears throat> and this leads me to really where I'm coming to at the end, because as I said, this is not a long message. But... We need to see what is the reason we can be thankful. This is what I've been, been th reflecting on. What, what's the reason we can be thankful? And I think we can turn to the book of Lamentations for, one of the, for an answer. Remember, Lamentations was written probably by the prophet Jeremiah. People are not completely sure. But it's a book of lament about the fall, the destruction of Jerusalem in 586 BC. But read these verses and let's read them together. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. And I just find those words so encouraging. And I think of the image of the mountain, the steadfast. It's like a rock. It's a mountain. Steadfast love never ceases. It's permanent. It's never going to go away. New every morning. That's the refreshment and the renewal we have. And then the focus on hope. And isn't hope the most wonderful thing about the Christian message? I read a great definition of hope the other day. A joyful expectation for the future based on true events of the past, which is the cross, the death and resurrection, which changes everything about my present. And so I'm just going to leave you with one final, well, I was going to, <laughs> with one final 
One final sentence, which is my summary for today, the conclusion I've called it. God's never-ending faithfulness gives us an enduring hope so that we can be eternally thankful. May God bless you all.